Hey everyone, I'm Shaw and I'm back with a new data science series. In this new series, I'm going to be talking about large language models and how to use them in practice. In this video, I will give a beginner friendly introduction to large language models and describe three levels of working with them in practice. Future videos in this series will discuss various practical aspects of large language models, things like using OpenAI's Python API, using open source solutions like the Hugging Face Transformers library, how to fine tune large language models, and of course, how to build a large language model from scratch. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share with others. And if you have any suggestions for me to include in this series, please share those in the comment section below. And so with that, let's get into the video. So to kick off the video series, in this video, I'm gonna be giving a practical introduction to large language models. And this is meant to be very beginner friendly and high level, and I'll leave more technical details and example code for future videos and blogs in this series. So a natural place to start is, what is a large language model, or LLM for short? So I'm sure most people are familiar with ChatGPT. However, if you are enlightened enough to not keep up with new cycles and tech hype and all this kind of stuff, ChatGPT is essentially a very impressive and advanced chatbot. So if you go to the ChatGPT website, you can ask it questions like, what's a large language model? And it will generate a response very quickly quickly like the one that we are seeing here and that is really impressive like if you were ever on AOL instant messenger also called AIM you know back in early 2000s or in the early days of the internet there were chatbots then there have been chatbots for a long time but this one feels different like the text is very impressive and it almost feels human like a question you might have when you hear the term large language model is what makes it large what's the difference between a large language model model and a not large language model. And this was exactly the question I had when I first heard the term. And so one way we can put it is that large language models are a special type of language model, but what makes them so special? And I'm sure there's a lot that can be said about large language models, but to keep things simple, I'm going to talk about two distinguishing properties. The first quantitative and the second qualitative. So first quantitatively, large language models are large. They have many, many more model parameters than past language models. And so these days, this is anywhere from tens to hundreds of billions of parameters. The model parameters are numbers that define how the model will take an input and generate the output. So it's essentially the numbers that define the model itself. Okay, so that's a quantitative perspective of what distinguishes large language models from not large language models. But there's also this qualitative perspective and these so-called emergent properties that start to show up when language models become large. And so emergent properties is the language used in this paper cited below, a survey of large language models available in the archive. Really great beginner's guide, I recommend it. But essentially what this term means is there are properties in large language models that do not appear in smaller language models. And so one example of this is zero-shot learning. One definition of zero-shot learning is the capability of a machine learning model to complete a task it was not explicitly trained to do. So while this may not sound super impressive to us very smart and sophisticated humans, this is actually a major innovation in how these state-of-the-art machine learning models are developed. So to see this, we can compare the old state-of-the-art paradigm to this new state-of-the-art paradigm. The old way, and not too long ago, we can say like about five, 10 years ago, the way the high-performing best machine learning models were developed was strictly through supervised learning. What this would typically look like is you would train a model on thousands if not millions of labeled examples. And so what this might have looked like is you have some input text like hello, hola, how's it going, está bien, so on and so forth. And you take all these examples and you manually assign a label to each example. Here we're labeling the language, so English, Spanish, so on. And so you can imagine that this would take a tremendous amount 
amount of human effort to get thousands, if not millions of high quality examples. So let's compare this to the more recent innovation with large language models who use a different paradigm. They use so-called self-supervised learning. So what that looks like in the context of large language models is you train a very large model on a very large corpus of data. And so what this can look like is if you're trying to build a model that can do language classification, instead of painstakingly generating this labeled data set, you can just take a corpus of English text and a corpus of Spanish text and train a model in a self-supervised way. So in contrast to supervised learning, self-supervised learning does not require manual labeling of each example in your data set. The so-called labels or targets for the model are actually defined from the inherent structure of the data or in this context of the text. So you might be thinking to yourself, how does this self-supervised learning actually work? And so one of the most popular ways that this is done is the next word prediction paradigm. So suppose we have this text, listen to your, and we want to predict what the next word would be. But clearly there's not just one word that can go after the string of words. There are actually many words you can put after this text and it would make sense. In this next word prediction paradigm, what the language model is trying to do is to predict the probability distribution of the next word given the previous words. What this might look like is listen to your heart might be the most probable next word, but another likely word could be gut or listen to your body or listen to your parents and listen to your grandma. And so this is essentially the core task that these large language models are trained to do. And the way the large language model will learn these probabilities is that it'll see so many examples in this massive corpus of text that it's trained on and it has a massive number of internal parameters so it can efficiently represent all the different statistical associations with different words. And an important point here is that context matters. If we simply added the word don't to the front of this string here and it changed it to don't listen to your, then this probability distribution could look entirely different because just by adding one word before this sentence, we completely change the meaning of the sentence. And so to put this a bit more mathematically, and I promise this is the most technical thing in this video, this is an example of a auto regression task. So auto meaning self, regression meaning you're trying to predict something. So what this notation means is what is the probability of the nth text or more technically the nth token given the preceding m token. So n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, so on and so forth. And so if you really want to boil everything down, this is the core task most large language models are doing. And somehow through this very simple task of predict the next word, we get this incredible performance from tools like ChatGPT and other large language models. So now with that foundation set, hopefully you have a decent understanding of what large language models are and how they work and a broader context for them. Now let's talk about how we can use these in practice. Here I will talk about three levels in which we can use large language models. These three levels are ordered by the technical expertise and computational resources required. The most accessible way to use large language models is prompt engineering. Next we have model fine tuning and then finally we have build your own large language model. So starting from level one, prompt engineering. Here I have a pretty broad definition of prompt engineering. Here I define it as just using an LLM out of the box. So more specifically, not touching any of the model parameters. So of these tens of billions or hundreds of billions of parameters that define the model, we're not gonna touch any of them. We're just gonna leave them as is. Here I'll talk about two ways we can do this. One is the easy way, and I'm sure is the way that most people in the world have interacted with large language models, which is using things like ChatGPT. These are like intuitive user interfaces. They don't require any code and they're completely free. Anyone can just go to the ChatGPT website, type in a prompt and it'll spit out a response. So while this is definitely the easiest way to do it, it is a bit restrictive in that you have to go to their website. This doesn't really scale well if you're trying to build a product or service around it. But for a lot of use cases, this is actually super helpful. So for applications where the easy way doesn't cut it, there is the less easy way, which is using things like the OpenAI API or the Hugging Face Transformers library. And these tools provide ways to interact with large language models programmatically. So essentially using Python. In the case of the OpenAI API, instead of typing your request in the ChatGPT user interface, you can send it over to OpenAI 
API using Python and their API, and then you will get a response back. Of course, their API is not free, so you have to pay per API call. Another way we can do this is via open source solutions, one of which is the Hugging Face Transformers library, which gives you easy access to open source large language models, so it's free, and you can run these models locally, so no need to send your potentially proprietary or confidential information to a third party in OpenAI. So future videos of the series will dive into all these different aspects. I'll talk about the OpenAI API, what it is, how it works, share example code. I'll dive into the Hugging Face Transformers library, same situation, what the heck is it, how does it work, and then sharing some Python example code there. I'll also do a video talking about prompt engineering more generally. How can we create prompts to get good responses from large language models? And so while prompt engineering is the most accessible way to work with large language models, just working with a model out of the box may give you suboptimal performance on a specific task or use case. Or the model has really good performance, but it's massive. It has like 100 billion parameters. So a question might be, is there a way we can use a smaller model, but kind of tweak it in a way to have good performance on our very narrow and specific use case? And so this brings us to level two, which is model fine tuning, which here I define as adjusting at least one internal model parameter for a particular task. And so here there are just generally two steps. One, you get a pre-trained large language model, maybe from OpenAI or maybe an open source model from the Hugging Face Transformers library. And then you update the model parameters given task specific examples. Kind of going back to the supervised learning versus self-supervised learning, the pre-trained model is gonna be a self-supervised model. So it will be trained on this simple word prediction task. But in step two, here's where we're gonna do supervised learning or even even reinforcement learning to tweak the model parameters for a specific use case. And so this turns out to work very well. Models like ChatGPT, you're not working with the raw pre-trained model. The model that you are interacting with in ChatGPT is actually a fine-tuned model developed using reinforcement learning. And so a reason why this might work is that in doing this self-supervised task and doing the word prediction, the base model, this pre-trained large language model, is learning useful representations for a wide variety of tasks. So in a future video, I will dive in more deeply into fine tuning techniques. Popular one is low rank adaptation or LoRa for short. And then another popular one is reinforcement learning with human feedback or RLHF. And of course, there is a third step here. You'll deploy your fine tuned large language model to do some kind of service or you know use it in your day-to-day -day life and you'll profit somehow. And so my sense is between prompt engineering and model fine tuning, you can probably handle 99% of large language model use cases and applications. However, if you're a large organization, large enterprise, and security is a big concern, so you don't want to use open source models, or you don't want to send data to a third party via an API, and maybe you want your large language model to be very good at a relatively specific set of tasks. You want to customize the training data in a very specific way, and you want to own all the rights, have it for commercial use, all this kind of stuff, then it can make sense to go one step further beyond model fine tuning and build your own large language model. And so here I define it as just coming up with all the model parameters. So I'll just talk about how to do this at a very high level here, and I'll leave technical details for a future video in the series. First, we need to get our data. And so what this might look like is you'll get a book corpus, a Wikipedia corpus, and a Python corpus. And so this is billions of tokens of text. And then you will take that and pre-process process it, refine it into your training data set. And then you can take the training data set and do the model training through self-supervised learning. And then out of that comes the pre-trained large language model. So you can take this as your starting point for level two and go from there. And so if you enjoyed this video and you want to read more, be sure to check out the blog in Towards Data Science. There I share some more details that I may have missed in this video. This series is both a video and blog series. So each video will have an associated blog, and there will also be tons of example code on the GitHub repository. The goal of the series is to really just make information about large language models much more accessible. I really do think this is the technological innovation of our time, and there are so many opportunities for potential use cases, applications, products, services that can come out of large language models. And that's something that I want to support. I think we'll be better off if more people understand this technology and are applying it to solving problems. So with that, be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up with future
future videos in this series. If you have any questions or suggestions for other topics I should cover in this series, please drop those in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.